Hello everyone. So until about two years ago or so, there really were no lipsticks on the market that I really enjoyed using all that much or had that much success with. So most of the lipsticks had ingredients that were problematic for me or had flavors or other uh, processed fragrance that I found to be offensive or they just didn't perform very well. But all that has changed over the last two years and now there are quite a few lipsticks on the market that I really have enjoyed and that have worked out well for me. And in addition, over the past month or so, there have been a number of lipsticks that have been released. So I thought what I would do is to talk about my favorite lipsticks of all of the ones that I've tried. And I've tried out about 80 or so. So I will let you know which ones those are so you can see what my comparison is. And I will go into depth on the brands that I think are the best. And of the new lipsticks that I will be discussing in this video, I have all eight shades of the new Merit lipstick. This is four of them. And then other lipsticks that I will be discussing in this video include the new uh, Westman Atelier lipsticks, the new MAC lipsticks, the new Skin by Kin lipsticks, and I also have uh, been trying out the new Charlotte Tilbury, which is now available in a bright red color and some other uh, bright pink colors. So first, a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin. And one thing that I found out is that there are certain ingredients that always do irritate my sensitive skin. And I know that those are ingredients that tend to be irritating for many other people as well. So I just don't talk about about any products that contain those ingredients on this channel. So many lipsticks that are on the market do contain synthetic fragrance, and so I don't talk about those at all. Now, a lot of the time when I'm not filming videos, I am wearing my glasses, and that is the time that I often wear brighter color lipsticks because I feel like that provides a bit of a balance to my face. So that is why I decided to wear my glasses for a lot of the footage in this video. So over the past couple weeks, I have spent a lot of time going back and trying out all of the lipsticks that I own and seeing which ones I really do like the most. And I have uh, counted them up and there were 80 total lipsticks, uh, not counting the lip balms that I have tried. And so I picked out a dozen brands that I think have really been the best for me and that I have really enjoyed. And then there's also some honorable mention type brands that I consider to also be very good. And then there's some more lipsticks that uh, I won't be talking about on this video and you can see the other ones that I have also tried. And then you can also look at the lipstick balms that I have tried. And so hopefully I will get to go back to those and get some more details on those soon. So looking at the honorable mention lipsticks in alphabetical order, let's start with the one from BK Beauty. So BK Beauty is a brush, a makeup brush company. And it is uh, run by a woman named uh, Lisa J here on YouTube. She's a former Mac artist and she does a makeup channel here. And so she also has a few uh, makeup products, including a line of lipsticks. So this is a bright red lipstick that I purchased uh, several months ago. It is called Confidence. And I think that this is a nice lipstick. It uh, has performed reasonably well to me. I wouldn't say it's the most refined red lipstick in my collection, but I think that it's a nice color. It does have some vanilla in it, so that is something that I'm not crazy about but I've been able to tolerate it, and I think this is a good price. The next line is Shantikai, and I am not generally that big of a fan of Shantikai. I've tried quite a few products from them, and I haven't had a lot of success with most of them. They have several lines of lipstick, and the only line that does not have uh, just fragrance in it is the Lip Veils, and so I have one of these. I have this one in the color Honey Pot, which is a neutral, but it does come in some other brighter shades as well. I think this one's actually very nice, but it is a very, very expensive company. So this lipstick is $52. And I think it's a nice lipstick. And I think that maybe when it came out several years ago, it might have been one of the better lipsticks on the marketplace. But now I feel like it's not really much better or any better than many of the other lipsticks that I have really enjoyed using. So I haven't found it at all necessary to buy another one of these, but I do think it's a nice product. 
So next let's talk about Charlotte Tilbury. These are not the best lipsticks on the market, but they are ones that I have kind of enjoyed using from time to time on occasion. I bought all three of these shades maybe two to three years ago, and I did use them quite a bit at the beginning. I've been less inclined to use them now. They have held up really well for me, but I just have so many better options that this is one of the ones that I'm not finding to be all that appealing now. So they have two different lines. So the first one is the Matte Revolution line. So I have the Pillow Talk one, and then I have one that is called uh, Walk of No Shame, which is kind of a reddish color. These have silicone in them, which I don't have a problem with. They have BHT in them, which I would kind of prefer not to use, although I do understand that this will keep lipsticks fresher for longer. And they also have some vanillin in them. And then Charlotte Tilbury has a second line of lipsticks, which is called the Kissing Formula. And this one, I think, is a, a little bit softer. It's it, it's supposed to not be as matte, but at least for some of these shades like this one, I really haven't noticed that much of a difference. The one that I have in this one is called the Nude Romance. So it's this is actually a refillable color. It's one of the few refillables that Charlotte Tilbury has. It is a nice case, but I haven't used it enough to refill it. So in the past, Charlotte Tilbury has pretty much just done lipsticks that are more on the neutral side. So for instance, that Walk of No Shame one that is a little bit red, but it's still one of the more neutral reds that I have in my collection. But for Valentine's Day of 2024, she came out with a variety of new lipsticks. So in the Matte Revolution line, she came out with a number of different shades of bright red lipstick. And then in the Kissing line, she came out with a number of different shades of pink lipsticks. So I did get a sample of one that is called Hollywood Vixen uh, and I think this is a again this is this formula is fine and I think that this shade is fine and I might wear it on occasion. Now I did think about actually buying one of the pink shades in the kissing formula. The one that I was really thinking about getting was called 90s pink and it was sort of a brownish rose type color and so I went and looked at this in Sephora and what I realized by swatching all of those kissing lipsticks on my hand is that they're all quite uh, shiny looking like a mirror type shiny. So that is something that I thought was just a little bit too much for me. I didn't think that my lips needed to have that reflective quality to them. And next I'll talk about a company called Cheekbone. So this is an indigenous company that has been around for several years and they are sold in Sephora in Canada, but not in Sephora in the US, at least not yet. So I have tried three lipsticks from this company, and I really do like the formula quite a lot. I think that this is a formula that, that seems like when I'm putting it on that it's going on with a little bit of difficulty and that it's not totally filling in my lips. But then when I smush my lips together a little bit, it spreads very, very evenly and it makes a very nice thin layer of lipstick that I really can hardly feel like is there, but that does last a long time. And I think it looks really nice and really natural. And so that makes it a little bit different than many of the other lipsticks that I have used. It doesn't have any kind of a taste or any kind of a smell. It feels good to me. And I think that as a colorful lipstick goes, I think that these are quite cheerful looking. And I kind of enjoy using them as especially again when I am wearing my glasses. So the next brand that I want to talk about is Fashion Fair. And so most of the products that this company offers, they're not appropriate for my skin tone, but I did try out, I really like their primer, and I did try out their lipsticks. And uh, I do like this formula quite a bit. Uh, I have one color that is called Lace, which is kind of a neutral color that I think is a very pretty color on my lips. And I, I like the way that this product feels on my lips. It's kind of feels nourishing. It has some good ingredients in it. I found this for me to work a little bit less well with the uh, the bright red color that I have, which is called Cat Fight. I think that it uh, tends to get a little bit messy around the corners of my lips, so I have to be pretty careful with this one, especially when I'm applying, that it doesn't turn into a mess. So I think that's really the way all lipsticks that were bright used to be, but lipsticks are so much better behaved now that this one is lagging a little bit in that area. But in terms of how it feels on my lips and how it looks on my lips, I think they're very nice. 
Now I have looked from time to time at the Fashion Fair lipstick line at Sephora and I think that most of the lipsticks that they offer really are too bright or too dark for me. But I think that if you're a person that likes that kind of color palette or if you have darker skin that this is worth looking at because I do really like this formula quite a lot. And next we have Kosas. And so Kosas is a lipstick that has been around for a number of years, really almost a decade. And I think that when it first came out, it was one of the best formulas on the market, probably the best formula on the market in terms of people that were interested in cleaner lipsticks that performed well. The main reason I don't use it more often is not because it's not a good lipstick, because I'm not crazy about the vanillin flavor to it. It is a little bit strong for me. And the next brand that we have is Colfi. And Colfi is a brand that is being highly supported by Sephora and that is self-described as being targeted at the South Asian market. And I do like the way that this lipstick performs. Now it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles type moisturizing ingredients in it, but I do think it's a very smooth lipstick. It goes on very nicely. I think it stays on very nicely. And I don't know that I think that this particular packaging looks all that high-end, but this lipstick actually is made in Italy and it feels really high quality to me. And I think that of the brands that you're likely to go into Sephora and see on the shelves, I think this is one of the cleaner brands there that uh, I think most people that have sensitive skin are going to do better with. And then next we have La Perla. And La Perla is a, a very expensive lingerie company. I've actually had a few things from them and they do make very, very lovely lingerie. But they're very, very expensive lipsticks. So I think this is the most expensive lipstick that I have tried, $54. But I thought that it would be fun to give it a try. This is just being sold at Nordstrom. And there are two lines of lipsticks. So one are regular lipsticks that are various different uh, undertones of red. And then they have ones that are lip balms. And the lip balms are uh, actually very pigmented. They're more like some companies' lipsticks but they don't have quite as much color in them. And again, they're different kinds of shades. And I kind of like the way that this looked on me and I like the way that it performed. I think it's uh, a very nice, smooth color. And I think that as someone that's a little bit hesitant to wear lipstick that's too bright, I think that this particular red lipstick is kind of nice on me. It doesn't overwhelm my face even when I'm not wearing my glasses. Now this lipstick does have quite a strong vanilla scent to it and that's really a little bit uh, more vanilla than I would like and so that's the main reason that I haven't really worn this very much. And the next brand is called LYS and I believe that that stands for Love Yourself. And this is a black owned brand that is currently being sold at Sephora and at Credo. One of the first products that I have tried is their Speak Love lipsticks. And they uh, come in a tall container like this and uh, they have some nice ingredients in them, such as sodium hyaluronate. They're made in Taiwan, and I think that this has performed really well for me. And it looks really pretty on, and it feels really nice. Now, what I will say about this lipstick is that it seems like it's a you know moderately priced lipstick at $27, but if you compare it on a per gram basis, it's really maybe the most expensive <laughs> lipstick in my collection because I haven't even used this very much and it really has very little product in here. And then Laura Mercier makes a couple of lipsticks that I still use from time to time. So the ones that I like are the uh, Rouge um, Essential lipsticks and these have been out for uh, quite a few years, I think. Uh, they're basically a silicone-based lipstick, and they come in uh, what seems to be mostly neutral type colors. I kind of like the feeling of these lipsticks. I think that they do emphasize my lips texture a little bit more than I would like. And in general, I feel like they're one of these formulas that, again, used to be a really nice formula, and now it's just fallen behind a little bit. But I still think it's a nice formula. It's just for the amount that they're charging for it now, I think that uh, you can get something better. And then they also have a lip crayon, which has a mango seed oil in it and raspberry seed oil. And this is actually feels very nice on my lips. So now let's talk about MAC. So I started using MAC in the late 1990s 
And I think that these are still lipsticks that have been wearable for me all these years. They do make a lot of different lipsticks in different kind of finishes and formulas. They do contain a lot of vanillins. But other than that, I think that most of these are not too bad. And I feel like I can wear them on occasion anyway. So of course the real benefit of MAC is that they have an awfully lot of different colors and so if you're looking for particular colors then this is really a good place to go to get it. And the other thing that I really really like about MAC is that I can go with my laptop and look at all of the shades of any of their lipsticks and I can upload a picture of myself onto the website and then I can try on and see what all of those different colors look like on me without actually going to the store or trying anything on at all. So although they make a variety of formulas, I would say that they're stalwart formulas or they're ones that are a little bit more on the matte type side. One is their regular matte line, then there's one that's called retro matte, and then there's a third line that's satins, but I think that those are very, very close to being their mattes too. So the thing about all three of these formulas of lipsticks is that they do hold up really, really well on my lips, but they do tend to be quite drying and quite hard on the lips. So what I usually do if I'm wearing a lipstick that's a more of a matte type lipstick or a satin type lipstick, then I will use my trusty uh, MAC Prep Plus Prime, which is a silicone formula to go underneath them. And that tends to make pretty much all lipsticks behave a lot better for me and feel a lot better and not dry out my lips. And it does have a little bit of vanilla in it, but that doesn't bother me so much with this product. So if it weren't for that particular formula, then I don't think I would be able to wear any of these uh, matte type lipsticks from MAC at all. But then just a couple of weeks ago, they came out with a new matte lipstick. So this is called the MAC Maximal Lipstick, and it is designed to have a matte type of an appearance, but to have a silkier formula. So it's supposed to go on more smoothly and to feel better on the lips and maybe not even to necessarily require a primer underneath it. So I have two of the colors in this new Maximal lipstick and then I have the old shades. So the one on the top here is the shade Mare. So on the very top I have the old version and then I have the new version. And then at the bottom here I have Ruby Woo. So I have Ruby Woo on the top in the old uh, retro matte version, and then I have the maximal one at the bottom. And I think that you can see that these do look fairly similar once they go on, but I also do think that the maximal one does go on much more smoothly and easily, so it's more fun to apply. And I think it also is not quite so hard on my lips. I don't feel like it's quite as drying. And even though I probably would put a primer down under it, uh, if I have one around, I can wear that one without a primer as well. But I do think that this is a step up for MAC and that I do enjoy wearing these new ones more than I did the ones in the past. They make three other lipsticks that I think are fairly close to the MAC matte and satin lipsticks. One is the MAC Amplified, one is the MAC Cream Sheen, and then one is the MAC Frost lipstick, which has a lot of frosty pearl in it. And then the MAC Powder Kiss lipstick, this is a little bit more of a modern formula. It has uh, silicone in it. This one does not have that vanilla in it. It has a, another kind of an unspecified flavor and saccharin. I haven't found it to be tasting so bad that I can't use it. And some people that don't like vanilla might like that one better. I think it's a little bit lighter on my lips. And then there's another cousin to that lipstick, which is this tall one. And this is called the MAC Powder Kiss Velvet Blur Slim Stick. This one does have vanilla in it. And probably the MAC lipstick that I like the most is called the MAC Luster Glass Sheer Shine Lipstick, which has raspberry seed oil, extra virgin olive oil in it, uh, sodium hyaluronate shea butter squalene, and jojoba oil, and ceramides. And it does still have that vanilla in it, but other than that, I really kind of like this formula a lot. It still has a lot of pigment in it, but it's just a little bit uh, sheer in terms of the base. And so I think that it's uh, very pretty and feels a little bit more hydrating on my lips. So I'm a little more inclined to wear those particular lipsticks than I am the other ones from this company. So next we have Mob Beauty. 
And Mob Beauty is a company that was founded by a guy named Vic Casali, who was one of the original uh, people who started MAC Cosmetics and who was their formulator. So this is a company that uh, has very big goals in terms of what they want their formulas to consist of. So they want them to be really environmentally sustainable, they want them to be vegan, they want them to be clean beauty, and they want them to uh, last a long time. So with all of these things, it's it's kind of hard to make a lipstick, I think, because it eliminates many of the ingredients that many people put in lipsticks. And then in addition, they have put these lipsticks in these cardboard packaging, which is totally compostable. So you remove this little plastic insert, and then this part you can just throw in your compost pile and it will go back to the earth. And there are two formulas. So one of them is a cream lipstick that has a lot of high quality oils in it and that uh, feels kind of creamy on my lips. It still performs fairly well. It stays on my lips uh, fairly nicely, but it, it doesn't last a really long time on my lips. I do need to keep reapplying it. And it's a little bit more messy than some of the formulas that I'm used to using. But I do think it feels really good on my lips and I think the colors are really pretty. And the colors for this line were developed by Vic Casali. And then there's a second line, which they are calling their matte line, but it's really a, also a very kind of a creamy type of a formula. So it's not a matte lipstick that, again, is going to last you for hours. You need to reapply it. And it's a lot softer and nicer to wear than many matte lipsticks. But I do think that it uh, has a nice look to it. It, again, feels nice on my lips. And for that uh, particular line, they decided to have one lipstick that is a bright red shade that is reminiscent of the, the shades that uh, Vic Caselli created when he was at MAC, including the Ruby Woo and the um, Russian Red. But in addition, he has worked with a number of uh, online um, makeup artists uh, who have large social media followings and allowed them to create the lipstick colors that they think are attractive. And so the, the shades in the matte line are a little bit of a hodgepodge. There's some in there that are more on the uh, goth type side, and there's some other ones on there that are more conventional. But in any case, I think this is a nice line, and I have enjoyed using them, but I think that um, of all of the Mob Beauty products, I would say that the lipsticks are the ones that they might be having the most difficulty with. I think a lot of the other ones are really best in category, and these lipsticks are also good. And then the next company is Ritual Defee, and this is an independent makeup brand that's been around for probably like 10 years. So it is an all-natural brand, and it is based in California, and it has a little bit of a goth type vibe or a witchy type vibe, but they also have a lot of colors that are designed to be ones that anybody can wear. And there are two different lipsticks. So the one that is uh, called Enchanted Lip Shears is actually a quite pigmented lip product and it uh, is in these small little tubes and they uh, come in a variety of different colors. And there is a, a really strong uh, lavender scent to this. So that is something that I don't really object to. I don't think that my lips are bothered by it at all, but I do think that every time I use these lipsticks, there's a little bit of a surprise because I'm not really expecting my lipstick to smell so much like lavender. But I think that that's probably acting a bit as a preservative, and I don't really mind it for that reason. And then their second lipstick is called the Forbidden Lipstick. And and this one is basically exactly the same as the Enchanted Lip Shears. It's just even more pigmented, and the colors tend to be more on the goth side, so they're a little more difficult for me to wear. There is one that's a bright red that is very popular, but in general, I think that they seem to be moving a little bit away from that. Most of the colors do seem to be out of stock. And these are not really expensive lipsticks in terms of the price, but they are fairly small in terms of the amount of lipstick that you get. So on a per gram basis, these are not cheap. And they have held up pretty well for me. So uh, I've had some of these for a few years, and they still don't seem to be going bad. 
And next are the lipsticks from Say. They are called Lip Blurs. So they are velvety and matte, but they are uh, kind of soft and creamy, and they have some sodium hyaluronate in them, so they do feel really good on my lips. They do go on pretty thick, so they uh, definitely are giving me a lot of matte color, and all of these colors are quite saturated. But I do think that they're very pretty colors, and they do feel good on my lips, and they do hold up pretty well, and I'm not needing to put a primer under them. So I have enjoyed them a lot and these do not have any kind of a fragrance to them or a flavor to them and so that is one thing I really enjoy about them too. And then we have Westman Atelier and Westman Atelier is a company that is associated with a celebrity makeup artist named Gucci Westman. I think that the original products that she launched were very nice but then starting much more recently she launched a few other things that I think have been not ones that I have liked very much at all so she launched a foundation that I thought really did sink into my wrinkles and uh, make me look worse and it also didn't really feel good to me and I think that part of the reason for that might be because she's including cottonseed oil and corn oil and soybean oil and that those tend to be oils that are fairly highly contaminated with chemicals that I don't want anywhere near my face. And then there was a liquid highlighter that uh, has synthetic fragrance in it, so I was very disappointed about that. Uh, there's an activating serum that irritated my skin. There was an eyebrow pencil that was only available in four shades and all of them were way too pigmented for me and then there's an eyeliner pencil that I don't think performed well for me at all and that also seemed really highly overpriced considering that it just seemed like a regular wooden sharpenable uh, not very impressive eyeliner. Now there is one product that I really like which is called the I Want You Mascara that was released uh, sometime last year and I think that that is a terrific mascara and I've been wearing it a lot but it is $45 so I don't think most people are going to be buying that one either. Now in terms of lipsticks, one product that was released before things started to, in my opinion, fall apart at Westman Atelier is this particular lipstick which is called Le Rouge and it has, uh, it's a compact and it has four different colors of lipstick. And so Westman Atelier actually sells this very nice little lip brush that's like a little paddle. And so it fits very nicely into these different uh, colors. Now I just have this particular one in this little box, this little cardboard box. It's actually supposed to fit into a very expensive compact. So this is actually a red lipstick that I really do like a lot. I especially like the formula of this. This has some very nice oils in it, including a large amount of cherry oil Oil, which is a more expensive oil in which I do really like. So this I think really does look very nice on my lips. I can put down a thin layer of it fairly easily and I think it looks pretty and it tastes good, it feels good, and I, I think this is the, the kind of a product that I was anticipating that Westman Atelier was going to keep making. Now the problem with this is that it's hard for me to figure out a good way to put this on if I'm not going to be at home because this Japanese brush, which goes so nicely with it, it doesn't have a case or anything. I would like it if it were like retractable, but it is not, and so even if I'm just putting this in my bathroom, I'm not sure what to do with this brush. I end up putting it away and then that makes me not very inclined to reach for this lip um, stick. And I certainly am not going to put this on with my fingers and even another retractable cheap lip brush I just don't think has worked uh, as well or given me as nice of an experience with this product. So all that being the case, when they came out with this new lipstick, I was kind of excited. They are using the same name for it. They are calling it the Lip Suede, and it comes in this uh, nice bullet, and it looks like the colors were kind of on the pretty side, so I did buy one right away, even though it's $50. It's supposed, I think, or eventually be refillable. Now, unfortunately, I would say that of all the lipsticks in my collection, I would say that this one is really close to at the bottom. So the, one of the things that I really don't like about it is the taste and the smell of it. I think that 
uh, it's really hard for me to believe that this doesn't have any synthetic fragrance in it, even though it's not listed. It just lists ethyl vanillin, which is a particularly potent form of vanillin. But I think there's just something weird about this, and it, it tastes sort of like, has a slight chocolatey note to it as well as vanillin, but it also just tastes really bad to me. And uh, it tastes actually quite similar, I realize, to the Kier Weiss. Uh, lipsticks and those do list uh, unspecified fragrance and I don't really know what that is either but I'm not sure what it is that is making these taste so weird but I definitely don't like the taste of it and it seems like it's something added it doesn't seem like it's just a chemical ingredient that's in the lipstick so that's one problem that would definitely keep me from wearing this lipstick but even if it tasted fine I still don't like this formula at all I feel like it has a weirdness about it that it uh, is at once dry but it also feels kind of like oily on my lips so it when I put it on it has just a little bit of a greasiness to it that I think is um, really not all that pleasant I don't feel like it looks all that great on my lips they do make a big deal about how you're supposed to exfoliate your lips and moisturize them but I have not found that either exfoliating them or using any kind of a lip balm or even my MAC prep plus prime product I haven't found that any of those have made these lip, this lipstick feel any better on my lips or look any better and it doesn't really last all that long on my lips but I don't I just don't like having this on my lips in terms of how it feels on my lips and I also just don't like the taste and the smell. So this is a huge disappointment for me and I, um, I'm not quite sure what's happening at that company but I really wonder about where their mind is at. So that's it for the honorable mentions and so now let's move on to the top dozen brands that I consider are the best in terms of lipsticks. So the first one is Armani. And Armani is actually a brand that I uh, really like in terms of there being a clothing house. And so I kind of have a uh, fondness for Armani and I was really interested in wearing their makeup, but I realized that pretty much everything that they make does have problematic ingredients in it, including uh, usually fragrance and a bunch of other stuff also. And I said a number of videos back that I thought that there really weren't any products that were made by any companies that's, that were owned by L'Oreal that I thought I had any potential of wearing. And that mostly seemed to be the case for all of the Armani products based on the ingredients and based on giving them a try. So I don't see doing a full review of the whole Armani line at any time in the near future. So let me just go over things really fast right now. They, their famous product is the Luminous Silk Foundation, and that does include parabens and fragrance. And I did try a sample of that, and that was really terrible for my skin. And then they also have a concealer where the ingredients are not quite as bad, so I did give that a try. I don't do all that well with doe foot type concealers, and this one was not really an exception for that. I don't think that it worked that well with my mature skin. I tried this uh, liquid lipstick, and it actually tasted fine to me, and it uh, didn't have the weird taste that most liquid lipsticks do. Do. and it actually looked nice on my lips when I first put it on there but it never dried down and it just turned into a really big mess and it got all over everything and I also got this little sample of eyeshadow this has a whole bunch of really problematic ingredients in it but I did give it a try and it uh, didn't really irritate my eyes as much as I thought that it would which is a little bit of a surprise but I also didn't really like the way it looked on my eyes and then I picked up this blush, and this blush is not so bad. It does have talc in it, but it is a very shimmery blush. So I think it's more like a highlighter that happens to have some color in it than it is like a regular blush. So I'll put a little bit of this on right now, and you can see what you think of it. I, I don't mind this, and if I think of it as a, a, a a mellow highlighter then I don't think it's bad at all and it hasn't irritated my face but it's it's fairly ordinary and it's a little bit high priced for what it is so the lipsticks are $45 there were uh, an original line that was released maybe two years ago or so and then there's uh, ones that are matte that were released sometime last year but I finally decided because I was working on this project to give them a try and wow, I am really happy that I decided to pick them up. I would say that of all the lipsticks that I have in terms of the performance, these are just lovely. And I especially like the shape of this bullet, which is 
designed in a way that makes it easy to trace around the shape of your lips and to make a, a nice cupid's bow uh, without actually using a lip liner or anything like that. I think that they go on very nicely. I think that they're very pretty when they're on. They stay on pretty well and they don't dry out my lips at all. And I don't mind wearing these one bit. And I am really tempted to uh, buy a bunch more colors, even though $45 is really totally unnecessary for me to have more lipsticks that are that price. But I do really, really like them quite a lot. And I think that the matte and the satin ones, they're very similar to one another. It's just that the matte ones are not quite as shiny. But in terms of how the formulas feel, they both feel really good on my lips. And there's no flavor to them at all. And they taste perfectly fine to me and I feel like it's the ingredient list is actually pretty good. The satin ones do have a variety of shades. The matte ones have a lot fewer shades and they seem to have moved towards both having uh, just neutrals and then several different shades of red and very few other colors. Now the matte version that I picked out when I was in the Sephora store is called Enigmatic, that is 116. But when I looked on the Armani site, they actually do not have that one even listed. So I don't know if they're getting rid of that one or if they're just not listing it because it's not in stock. But in any case, if you really like red lipsticks, I think that these would be terrific, especially those matte ones. And if you like a, a more neutral a type of lip, then that would be good. But otherwise, I think you might have to stick with the satin versions. But a big A plus for this brand. So I am happy that there is one single product that is made by L'Oreal that I actually feel enthusiastic about at this point. And then next, let's talk about Glossier. So Glossier is a more affordably priced uh, line of products that is now sold at Sephora. And they have three different lipsticks that I will talk about uh, briefly. So the first one, which is actually one of my very favorite formulas is the Glossier Ultra Lip. I think that those were introduced at the beginning of 2022. These are almost like lip balms. They are um, in a kind of a clear base and they are um, very comfortable on the lips. They have a lot of really good ingredients in them and they go on nice and soft. But they do, in some cases, have quite a lot of pigment in them. So that's why I want to talk about them with these lipsticks. And I really like a lot of these. I have actually all of the shades in these. And I have worn them quite frequently. And they are not so expensive that I don't feel like I can wear them on a regular basis. I wear these quite a lot. And then if I need to, I just can replace them. And they do not have any kind of an added taste to them. They taste actually good to me. And I have had some of these ever since the line was released and they are still feeling fine to me. So they're holding up very well. Now the next line that I actually think is kind of a problem child for Glossier is the Glossier Generation G. And this was their original lipstick and they have reformulated it twice so far. And I'm not sure they have quite figured it out yet. I did a review of their newest reformulation back in uh, December, I think. And at the time, I really liked it a lot. I thought that they had done really well with it. They took out all the added flavor to it and a bunch of other problematic ingredients. And I thought that they felt really good to me. But what I have found is that it's only been a few months. And nonetheless, that some of these lipsticks are actually starting to, to taste kind of a little bit on the rancid side to me. And I looked at the reviews on the Glossier site and there were and on the Sephora site. And there were a number of people that were complaining about this new reform formulation and saying that the lipsticks did taste particularly bad to them. So I think that they were using the, the flavor in the old version to cover over some of the ranc rancidity. And I don't think that that's a good idea at all. That's a terrible idea. But I also think that they're using a number of oils in this that uh, do have the potential of going rancid and that probably they should think about uh, switching to oils that are not quite as difficult. I still am willing to wear them. It's only really faint and it's only uh, it's not in all of the versions that I have, but I think that they're probably not going to be around for very long for me. And uh, they may have to go back to the drawing board again with this. And then G Suit is Glossier's liquid lipstick. And this is not the kind of liquid lipstick that you put on and then it stays on for 10 hours. It is a lipstick that you put on and then you know, if you lick your lips too many times, you don't have any left on it at all. Uh, it does taste really good to me. I think that if you get a color that's a little bit more easy 
going, that that works okay. I think that if you get a color that is on the bright side, one of the red colors, that this turns into a kind of a messy lipstick and a little bit more messy than I'm willing to put up with. And then next we have House Labs, which is Lady Gaga's brand, and she makes a line of lip crayons that are called the Monsters. So I have several different shades of these, and I actually would really like to have more shades of these. This is a, a very nice product, I think. Uh, they are crayons, and so they are twist up, and they are uh, kind of in between a, a lip crayon and a lipstick. I think that they you can draw a nice, neat lip on them with a with the tip of this, but they also are very soft and very comfortable, uh, more like a velvet type of a lipstick. And I think that especially when it comes to the red lipsticks, that these work really well, That it, and they're certainly not very expensive, and I think that this is a highly overlooked product. And these have, I think, a really clean ingredient list. Lady Gaga supposedly has fibromyalgia, and so she seems to be honestly interested in cleaner beauty products. I think that these taste really good. They don't have any added fragrance in them, and I feel really good about using them. And then next we have the red lipstick from the Ismea Lips Collection. So this collection has only one regular lipstick in it. It is a bright red that is called Cardinal. It's kind of an in-between red that is uh, not cool and not warm. And it is one that I am capable of wearing, but that does look very, very bright on my skin. So it's really a little bit too bright for me to want to wear on a regular basis. But nonetheless, I am a really, really big fan of this product because I really think that this is just an amazing formula to the point that this is not only the best red lipstick that I have ever tried, but it's really the best formula, I think, by far of all of the lipsticks that I have ever used. And that if they were to create some other lipstick colors in this, really regardless of what they were, I would run out to buy it really fast. Now, this is a lipstick that really has not gotten any attention at all, and I think that there's a couple reasons for that. The, the one reason is because it was originally released only in a very expensive uh, artistic case that was shaped like a male genitalia and that cost like $95. So I'm not sure how many people actually bought that product, but of the people who review products on YouTube and in the beauty space, they really um, did not go over very well with that product. They either found it to be uh, weird or funny or offensive, but in any case, something that they were not interested in buying. But in the fall of 2023, they did release it just in these plain metal cases, which I think are kind of lovely. Uh, they're very simple uh, and you don't need to have anything else. And they're um, $34, so I think that that's not a bad price considering what a great formula this is. The reason that I like this formula, it has just a little bit of a stickiness to it, so it goes on my lips really beautifully and really uh, highly pigmented in one swipe. It doesn't really need any kind of a lip pencil in order to make it look really nice and neat. It stays on my lips really well. It tastes really good. It feels really good. It's very hydrating. It has, I think, cherry oil in it. So it's a very, very nice product. Now this company does not accept any returns, but I did have one product from them a lip liner that did not work for me and they did refund my money very cheerfully with regard to that. So at least if there's a problem with it that uh, I think that they will take care of that for you. But this does have a really good ingredient list in addition to just uh, my feeling enthusiastic about it. Now, in addition, I just want to mention really quickly that Isamaya also has a line of lip balms in a number of different colors. And the reason that I think it's important to bring this up is this is the one lip balm that I have used that I think works really, really well on top of matte lipsticks. So I think that usually when I put a lip balm or a lip gloss or anything like that on top of a matte lipstick, that that really ruins the performance of the matte lipstick so it doesn't last very well and it doesn't look as nice. But I think that when I put this on the top, there's something about it that the matte lipsticks look a lot nicer, but they do look a little bit shiny. But they also feel more comfortable to me and they still last for quite a while. So I feel like I'm getting a lot of the benefits of a long-lasting matte lipstick, but that they have become a formula that I'm much more enjoying wearing. So I think that if you're that kind of person that would like to wear matte lipsticks more for the long-lastingness of it, 
that this is another thing that you might consider. This comes in a bunch of different shades, and I did a full video on the Isenea line, so if you're interested in that, then you can take a look at that video. And then next is Jones Road, and you can see that I am a fan of Jones Road because I have all of these different colors. Now, of course, Jones Road is the new company that is owned by Bobbi Brown, the cosmetics artist. She left Estee Lauder a number of years ago, and then she started this company. And I think that it's uh, fairly clear now that she started it primarily to create cosmetics for herself. She is in her uh, late 60s now, and so she created cosmetics that she thought would work for her and her friends. And then she is also trying to have a really casual vibe where women are able to look a little bit fresher and a little bit prettier without putting on a whole lot of makeup. And so with these lipsticks, I think this is part of that vibe. So a lot of these lipsticks, especially the original shades, are really bright colors. And I think that her idea with this, and I kind of agree with it, is that as you get older, that adding a little bit of life to your face in terms of putting on some color on your lips is, can be attractive, but you don't want it to be too big of a deal. So these are very light, easygoing, pretty lipsticks. Uh, you might need to reapply them every hour or so, but they're very pleasant. Now, many of the Jones Rhodes products do have essential oils in them or other fragrance type ingredients that I have not done well with, but these don't have any flavor type ingredients in them at all, and I do think that they taste really good. They feel really good on my lips. They go on really easily, and they, they look really pretty. So even if they disappear, I think that they disappear in a way that looks really nice along the way. And I think as, especially as an everyday lipstick that is going to look casual and uh, a little bit more put together, but um, just kind of a little bit prettier, that these are very nice. And then next we have Lisa Eldridge, and she has four different lines of lip products in addition to her lip glosses, so I will talk about all four of those. So let's start with the line that I like the most, which is the Luxuriously Lucent Lipsticks. And these are lipsticks that are more on the soft side. They have a little bit of a texture of being a balm, but they do have a little bit more pigment to them. But they're still a, a fairly light formula in terms of the pigment. So I feel like they go on uh, very nicely. They stay on my lips really nicely. They have a little bit of that stickiness to them that I think works well for me. They taste really good. They don't have any flavor or any fragrance in them. And I think that they're all really pretty. But I think that the best thing about uh, Lisa Eldridge lipsticks in general is that she has a really remarkable sense of color. And that there's something that she does in terms of working on the undertones that allows her to create lipsticks that make me feel like even if they're colors that I don't think that I can wear when I actually get them on my face, they actually all look really good to me. So I've actually experimented with this in terms of buying uh, some of the shades that I thought would be the least appropriate for me. And I feel like in all of her lines, I've been able to wear all of the products that I have purchased and that they all have looked really good on me. And that seems to be the case for other people as well. So that is really an accomplishment. And I'm not quite sure how she does that. It's really impressive. So these lipsticks are made in Italy and I have had some of them for uh, almost two years and they seem to be holding up fine. None of them have broken uh, and all of them still seem to be uh, tasting and feeling really good to me. And then the next line of lipsticks is what she calls the True Velvet Lipsticks. So these are more matte lipsticks and they are a soft matte, so they're not the kind of matte that's going to last you for 10 hours, but they do hold up fairly well on the lips. And the bullet has a, a design of velvet along the side of it, so that's kind of pretty. And again, I think the colors are really remarkable in terms of uh, how well they look on my lips and how well they suit me, even though they are very pigmented. So I do feel like the ones that I have purchased so far, I am able to carry off. So that has been kind of impressive. So the most popular lipstick from the True Velvets line is called Velvet Ribbon. And I think that that is a kind of a blue red that I have not purchased. I'm not 
that crazy about blue reds on me. But that one, people really seem to like it quite a lot. And I think the second most popular one is called Velvet Muse, which is kind of a rosewood shade. And this was a lipstick that I think is really a nice color. And since she came out with it, I think a lot of other people have released colors that are similar to that in their lipstick lines. And so I did a swatch on my arm where I showed a bunch of different uh, versions of this kind of rosewood type of a color so you can compare those if you're interested in that shade as I am. Now one thing to know about these lipsticks is that I do think that they have a bit of a tendency to break. I had two of these lipsticks break uh, almost immediately after I purchased them and received them in the mail. And when I got in touch with the company, they said that this happens because they get jostled around in shipping and they have so much pigment in them that that makes them a little bit on the fragile side. And so they had no problem sending me new ones when I sent them a photo of the damage lipstick but it kind of has made me a little concerned about them if they are that fragile and now I'm actually kind of too concerned to bring them out of the house and that is a little bit on the limiting side so I feel like for these I have kind of put the brakes on my buying more of them even though I do really like the colors and I really like the performance of the ones that I have tried so far and then the third lipstick line is very, very close to the True Velvets. Those are called the Insanely Saturated Lip Colors. And these are basically the True Velvet formulas, but they just have more pigment in them and they tend to be quite bright. And then finally, she has a line of liquid lipsticks that I did a full video on last year and I am not generally a fan of liquid lipsticks. I don't like the way that they taste or that they feel and these I think are much better so if I'm going to wear a liquid lipstick that's going to last for a long time then this would definitely be the one that I would pick. Uh, these come in basically a lot of the same shades as the True Velvets. They do last for quite a long time on my lips. They do have a, a very short-lived taste that's uh, probably from like alcohol or something like that that will last for like 15 or 30 seconds and then dissipates and then after that they actually feel okay so they they feel moisturizing on my lips I don't feel like well, when I wear them that my lips are in worse shape at the end of the day and they do last for quite a while and if I want to use the same color for a base and then put the true velvets over it then they work pretty well together too so I really do like this uh, much more than I do any other liquid lipstick and I still don't wear that that often but I think that there are occasions when you want a lipstick that is going to last for a long time and these are a really terrific solution for that and I especially like the colors in these and then next we have Merit and you know Merit is a line that I think is an awfully lot like the Lisa Eldridge line so I am not saying that they exactly copied the Lisa Eldridge line but I think that that must have been a big inspiration for them because I think that both their satin lipsticks and their matte lipsticks seem an awfully lot like the Lisa Eldridge ones. So the first lipsticks were released in 2022 these are the satin ones and these have the texture that they're almost like a lipstick balm they are very high hydrating on the lips. They feel really good. I think that they taste really good. They do list flavor on the list, but when I asked them about it, that they told me that the flavor consisted of raspberry seed oil. And I do believe that because they do taste really good to me. And it does taste like there's some high quality oils in here. And these lipsticks do have more pigment than a typical lip balm. In some of the cases, the shades are on the brighter side. And then in other cases, the shades are more on the more neutral side and compared to even a lot of neutral lipsticks they have a little bit of grayishness to them which I actually find to be a really easy going with my complexion so I feel like I can wear all of these shades and they all feel really natural to me and uh, there's something that I can just throw on and feel like I'm not made up but that I do look a bit better and I have had a number of these shades since they were first released and I have since picked up all of the rest of the shades 
And I think that they're holding up fairly well. I've had a couple of them break on me, but that's not that unexpected considering that it has been two years. And I think that they're all smelling perfectly fine and I am continuing to use all of them. And I think that, you know, considering the price, uh, I think that's a reasonable price for a lipstick like this. And I think the case is very nice. They're in the, they have this like acrylic top on it. I do think that they should, um, Create, sell these lipstick replacements so that you don't have to keep buying these acrylic tops because uh, of environmental reasons. But in general, I think that this is a, a case that feels very luxury oriented and that has a uh, very functional and very pretty. So the new lipsticks that came out are the matte versions. And I think that these are lipsticks that are quite a lot like the Lisa Eldridge True Velvets lipsticks. These are a soft matte formula. They are in colors that I think are very wearable. They seem to have put a lot of effort into these colors and I think that they all do look nice on me. They go on really easily and they're not lipsticks that will last all day, but they do last for quite a while and I really don't mind putting them on at all uh, and reapplying them. I don't feel like I need a primer under them and I feel like they go on very easily and that they have kind of that velvet suede type of uh, feeling to them, which I find to be appealing. And I also think that they did a good job picking out a good balance of different shades for this line. So there are two different red colors. There are a couple of pinky colors. There's a few that are truly nude colors. And then there's one that's kind of on the brownish side. And I actually uh, purchased all of these right away uh, with the hope that they would work out for me. And they have actually been all terrific. They actually have surpassed my expert expectations in terms of what they would be like, so I'm really happy about that. Now there actually is a ninth shade in the satin lipstick, uh, which is called Apertif. This was released in a holiday set uh, a year ago, and then it was released very briefly as a uh, limited edition over the summer, and in both, time, both cases they sold out really, really fast. And so far, uh, Merit has not brought out the Apertif as a permanent fixture in their line, which is kind of too bad because I think that this is a lipstick that a lot of people were really, really enthusiastic about. This is a lipstick that is kind of a neutral red, but it's also not very pigmented. So therefore, people that have complexions like I do, which are not really all that well suited to a bright red lipstick, can still get the look of a bright red lipstick and this wonderful formula, but without feeling like the lipstick is uh, kind of carrying them away. And so I have a couple of these uh, in stock, but I really hope that they bring it back and have it be part of their regular line. Now, the other thing that happened with Merit is that pretty much like a, a day or two after they released these lipsticks, a YouTuber and makeup artist named Wayne Goss uh, did a big long uh, video talking about how disappointed he was with the company and how he was never going to do business with them again. So apparently he had bought several thousand dollars worth of merchandise. I'm not sure exactly what he was doing with it. I know that he was testing some of it for his YouTube channel and he, I think he also has some private makeup clients. Uh, he wanted an invoice for his previous uh, purchases and to give to his accountant and they didn't want to give him that invoice and they canceled one of his orders without giving him any information about it and then when he wrote to them and asked them to explain or ask what happened to his order no one answered his emails and so I think that he has the right to be kind of mad about that so whatever is happening at Merit I hope that they clean up their customer service I've heard some other bad experiences about the customer service as well but I kind of feel like there aren't enough really good clean lipsticks in the world that I can just say this brand is canceled because it did this one bad thing so I am going to keep using them myself and I am hoping that if people have bad customer service experiences they let uh, people know about them so we can put some more pressure on the company to clean things up but in general I do think that in terms of these products that these are really phenomenal lipsticks especially for the price and I am really happy that I have all of them and they did finally, after the video aired, uh, offer an apology to Wingos. And I did notice on their website that they do have a policy that they can cancel your orders without notice if 
if they think that you're reselling it. So maybe they thought that he was reselling it. But I wouldn't necessarily think that a makeup artist in the UK was necessarily reselling the product. I think it very well may be that he's using a lot of it and giving it away to the people that he uses it if he has really uh, high profile clients. And I would think that a company like Merit would want that to happen and to get more public notice and more exposure rather than just to treat people badly. I don't think that's ever a good idea. You should never assume that people are doing something nefarious just because they're buying too much stuff from you. I think that's a very bad policy. And so now I want to talk about NARS. Now NARS is a company that has been around for maybe 20 years or so. It was started by a French makeup artist and it is currently owned by Shiseido. And until about two years ago, I think that NARS was one of those companies where really everything that they were offering was off the table for me because they were using problematic ingredients in it. But it seems that they have made a really conscious and determined decision as of about two years ago that they were going to really uh, clean up in terms of offering products with much better ingredients that really people would not object to. And I think that they have done a wonderful job with that. All of the new products that they have introduced have been really wonderful and this includes three of their lipstick lines. So the first line that I really consider to be my favorite matte lipsticks are the NARS Power Matte lipsticks and I have a bunch of different colors of these because I got really excited about them. Now the thing about these lipsticks is that they do last really really well on the lips really better than any other lipsticks that I have used. And I think that that can be really helpful for occasions when I don't want to worry about my makeup and have to keep reapplying it. Now I do like the way that these apply. They have kind of a feeling of that velvety kind of a texture when they first go on. And they feel really soft, but then uh, quickly they do become a much more dry. So I do feel that I need to wear these over my MAC Prep Plus Prime product and that if I do that, that they do feel okay. And then on occasion, I do put on that uh, Ismea lip balm over the top of them. And if I do that, then I really think that I get a wonderful look that will last for quite a while and that uh, feels really comfortable to me and looks really pretty. Now, one thing to know about these is that they claim that they have a six month usage life, but I've had some of these since right after they came out, which was I think November or October of 2022, and they seem to all be lasting fine. So I'm not real concerned about that six month usage life. And then another product in the Power Matte line are the Power Matte Lip Pencils, which were released last year. And I think that these were uh, really misnamed because they are certainly nothing like any of the lip pencils that I have in my collection. They are really more like lip crayons. They're a sharpenable product and they are, um, a product that is very velvety, so in that, in that respect, they're a lot like the Power Matte lipsticks, and they're very highly pigmented. A lot of the colors are the same, but they are a little bit more easygoing, and they don't dry up as much. So if you don't like the dryness of the Power Matte lipsticks, then this could be a good product to try out. They are, just like the Power Matte lipsticks, they can create a nice, controlled, pretty lip uh, that... Uh, looks very nice and that doesn't require any lip pencil and it stays in place nicely but this one uh, will wear off a little bit faster but it's a little bit softer I don't feel like I need to put any kind of a lip primer underneath it I can put down a lip balm on top of it if I want but I think it creates a really pretty matte look uh, that's a little bit more casual and it, it's wearing a little bit more like the Merit matte lipsticks or the uh, Lisa Eldridge matte lipsticks or the house labs ones. So if you're looking for something that's not going to be as hard to wear, then this would be a good choice. And then the third lipstick line that they have released over the past two years is the NARS Afterglow uh, Sensual Shine lipsticks. So these are quite glossy. They're kind of um, 
clear in terms of the base, but they do have a lot of bright pigment in them in some cases. And I do think that they feel really good on my lips. They have a nice flavor to them that is natural. It doesn't have any added flavor to it, but I think it, it feels good. It tastes good. I enjoy wearing it. I think it looks a little bit messy, especially when I wear these brighter colors. I don't feel like I'm drawing a really nice, neat lip with them, but I enjoy them very much, and I do wear them from time to time, and I think that these are... Uh, Another really good product from NARS. So now let's talk about Pat McGrath. And based on Pat McGrath's history, a lot of people believe that this is a company that is supposed to be really, really luxury beauty. And their first lipsticks were these matte trance lipsticks, which are $39. And they were released in 2017, so this is a formula that's getting a little bit on the older side. And I have a couple of these. I don't think that they're a bad formula and they don't have any added flavor in them. They taste okay to me. I think that they perform fairly well. They're a little bit on the dry side and I'm not so crazy about these in terms of how they look, but I think that they're okay. I just think that for $39, they're kind of on the expensive side. Uh, they do come in these lovely cases and the cases are kind of original because they have these lips on them. Now, what I think is going on with Pat McGrath is that they have concluded that they would be better off if they were uh, positioned as a uh, more of like a high-end type company, like an ordinary company that you would buy things from at Sephora rather than something that is really, really expensive. So therefore, when they released these lipsticks, uh, the second line, which are their satin lipsticks, people have uh, kind of objected to that, uh, less because of the formula and more because they think that this should have better packaging. So this is uh, not entirely dissimilar from the uh, matte trans lipsticks but the case is certainly not as high-end so this is an actually not a smaller amount of lipstick at all the matte trans is four grams and this satin allure is like 3.7 grams so it's not a smaller lipstick but the container is smaller and it doesn't seem uh, as nice even though it has this cute little bow on it so it really depends on whether or not you want to pay a lot of extra money for packaging because these are only $30 and in terms of the formula I think that the formula for these satin ones has been really terrific for me so they are much easier going and but they do think that they last pretty well on my lips they actually seem to last better than the matte trance ones do uh, they feel comfortable I don't feel like I need to put them on over a primer and I think that these colors some of the colors that I have have been really beautiful colors and I think that they wear really well uh, they they wear off uh, looking pretty all along the way and they taste good they feel good and all in all I think this is one of my favorite lipstick formulas so one thing to know about the Pat McGrath website is that they do not accept any returns of used merchandise but I think that for me it's been worth it to try out some things from the website because when they have those sales it is a really good discount and the next company is RMS and this is a clean beauty company that has been around since 2000 2009. It was founded by a woman named Rosemary Swift. She sold the company a few years ago. She's getting to be in her late 60s and she is still really involved in the company but it is uh, has another CEO and uh, an ownership investment group. And they have introduced since then uh, some newer products that have uh, more synthetic ingredients in them, but I continue to do well with them as long as they don't have uh, rose geranium or other essential oils in them. So they have an older line of lipsticks that's been around for a number of years, which is called Wild with Desire. So those are highly pigmented lipsticks that I consider to be fairly similar to the MAC matte lipsticks, except that they don't include that vanillin fragrance in them. And I think that they perform similarly to the MAC lipsticks, uh, but uh, they do tend to go rancid, uh, or maybe you just notice the rancid anymore because they don't have the flavor on the top of them. So I don't think that those are bad lipsticks, but those are not ones that I have really been wearing uh, very much in recent years. They don't have that many colors, but there is one color that's called RMS Red that is really well associated with uh, Rose Marie Swift, and that's kind of an orangey red. And then this past year, uh, I think in the fall of 2023, they came out with a new line of lipsticks, which are called the Legendary Serum Lipsticks. So they come in a bunch of different colors. 
and this is a brightly colored lipstick that is super hydrating on the lips and it's in a really soft formula and it comes uh, within a clicking type of a container where uh, you can click it up but you can't click it back down and uh, that it goes on the lips in a way that's like nothing that I have ever felt before. So it's kind of wet and it kind of is um, cooling to the lips, but it's not from menthol or anything like that. It actually just seems to have a feeling of hydration. So these include um, some jojoba esters and squalane as some of the main ingredients. And uh, water is actually the first ingredient. It's actually bitter cherry fruit water. And then it has denatured alcohol as the fifth ingredient. So I wasn't sure if I would like this particular formula and it was uh, quite weird at the beginning so I wasn't quite sure what to think of it. But as time has gone on I do think that these are actually quite good for my lips and they actually uh, are very pretty. I think at the beginning they have a, a pretty bright color, more bright than I was anticipating. Uh, but then they quickly wear down to something that's more like a stain which I think is also very pretty. And one thing that I have found is that uh, there's really no bright red uh, in that's either a blue red or a mid-turn rain, but there is one that is a um, that same orange red. So I think that uh, Rosemary Swift wanted to use these lipsticks, but she wants something that's going to be uh, more saturated and that is going to stay on her lips for longer because that's her signature look is to have that particular color be bright on her lips. And so this is a little bit of a different formula and it uh, stays on the lips a bit more. So if you're looking for something that's going to wear off in terms of a stain, then this orange red one is probably not the one to pick, but I do think it's also a nice product. And then the one that is orange red is named Ruby Moon, and this is named after Rosemary Swift's little Yorkie. And then the last lipstick that I have here is another brand new lipstick that was released just this past month. And this is from a company called Skin by Kim. And this is a Kim Kardashian, and I will say first that I am not a fan of a Kim Kardashian at all, and I do think that she's done an awfully lot of controversial things, and I am especially not happy about her wearing that Marilyn Monroe dress. But nonetheless, when I looked at this Skin by Kim line, what I feel like is that compared to pretty much all of the other mainstream companies, or even clean beauty companies, that they are using products that have really, really good ingredient lists, and that I was optimistic about and from that respect. The idea that Cody, which has never had any interest in clean beauty at all, is now creating some products that do have much better ingredient lists, that did make me interested enough to try this product. And I was kind of shocked that this turned out to be a really good lipstick, like one of the best ones that I have tried. Now it is only available in really neutral type shades, and some of them are those really light uh, warmer shades that are more like concealer lips that I really don't think that I could pull off. So I tried to find the one that I thought would be the most uh, pink colored and that would give some life to my lips. And I think that it works okay. It's still a little bit more neutral than I would usually like. But in terms of the formula for this, I am super, super impressed with it. I am really surprised. So these new lipsticks, they are based on uh, dimethicone, but they also have a lot of really moisturizing ingredients in them. So they include shea butter, hydrolyzed collagen, avocado oil, jojoba oil, hyaluronic acid. They are made in Italy. And I think that for me, they have gone on really smoothly. Uh, they go on really easily. They look really pretty. I don't think that this particular color has been unwearable to me. So I know that a lot of people don't want to support the Kardashians at all, and I don't really want to support them myself. And it also is the case that this website does not accept any returns, and so I think that that's kind of a bad precedent for Cody to be uh, starting. If it weren't that I was really interested in them from a clean beauty 
point of view, I wouldn't have picked them up either. And then next we have the lipsticks from Victoria Beckham. And again, these are smaller lipsticks. They come in these little tubes, which actually are made out of glass. So that's, uh, they're kind of fancy and that's, uh, I think, contributing a lot to why the price is so high. But they are very nice lipsticks. They're very comfortable on my lips. Now, if you look at any of the pictures of Victoria Beckham, I think that you will notice that she, what she generally does is to create a fairly dramatic, smoky type of an eye, and then to have a really muted lip to go with it. And usually she's wearing a lipstick that's more neutral, but even if she does wear a red lipstick, it's a very muted type of a red lipstick. So that is really what you should expect from these lipsticks. They do tend to be quite understated. They do have some uh, nice moisturizing ingredients in them. They do feel good on my lips. They actually taste nice without having any flavoring in them. And they feel good, and I think that they look really pretty and that the shades do look nice on me. But again, it's going to be a very understated lip. I do think that they don't uh, hold up on the lips that long. They're not really meant to be on the lips. They, they tend to be like one step up, I think, from being a lip balm. But they're a very elegant lip balm and especially if you uh, like these beautiful glass tortoise shell packaging, uh, then this could be a nice product, but they are pretty pricey for the amount of product that you get. And so in summary, I put together a list where I talk about my absolute favorite lipsticks and when I look over this list, pretty much all of them were released in the past two years. So I think that the quality of the lipsticks that are available have progressed a whole lot and I am feeling really good about them. And now instead of just wearing lipsticks when I feel like I really want to look a certain way, I feel like these are things that I can wear on an everyday basis just because they are comfortable and good for my lips and I am enjoying wearing them. So I think that that's been a really big shift for me. And then on the next page are the lipsticks that I think are also very good, but that I wouldn't uh, say are my very favorites. And then on the last page, I have a whole list of lipsticks that I use occasionally, but uh, not all that often. And uh, in a lot of cases, these do have some kind of a fragrance in them that I don't find to be wholly objectionable, but that I would really prefer not to have. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And if you have tried any of the lipsticks that I discussed in this video, then I hope you will let me know what you thought of them. In addition, uh, if there are any lipsticks that you have tried that I didn't bring up in this video, then I certainly hope that you will let me know about those so I can go and try those out as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then I hope you will go ahead and do that. And Coco and I love you very much. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.